Hey everybody, I am John Barker and welcome back to another episode of Here to Record Show and Tell. In this episode, we're taking a look at the Scarhoy MC series. I have a few units here from Scarhoy. We have the MC3 and the MC5, and these are modular units um, used as broadcast panels for your ATEM switcher, but also for a whole lot of other stuff. What you can do is you can just plop them together like that or take them apart and use them, use this one as itself and uh, it can be used as a preview program switch for an ATEM or you can you know, plug in another one on the, on the end here and they just magnetically seal together and you can use them to control an ATEM here, control other devices on the other end. So we're gonna take a look at this today. We're gonna take a run through how you configure it, a few of the other options and uh, let's have a look. In the interest of full disclosure, I have went to the Scarhoy offices and I picked up these uh, review items and then in a few weeks time I'll be bringing them back again um, and giving it back to the guys there. So a big thanks to them for letting me borrow them for a few weeks, but uh, they're not paying for this video and uh, they're not giving me these for free. I'm just going to bring them back again after I have a little bit of a play around with them. Uh, so that's that. So who are these designed for? Well. Basically, anybody in the broadcast industry or in the live production industry, if you have um, an ATEM, that was the big focus for Scarhive for a few years, was um, using the ATEM or Arduino to control an ATEM. You could build your own device, you could buy one from them, and that was a pretty heavy focus for a long time. Uh, since then, they've come up with a thing called Unisketch, which allows you to take things a whole lot further, so you can still control your ATEM. Here you can see I have it connected to my ATEM and it's bringing up the uh, program and the preview and I can cut between those sources and stuff. Um, so if you have an ATEM, this is uh, your go-to broadcast panel that is configurable, but also that will not break your budget as much as uh, like a 1ME or 2ME broadcast panel straight from black magic design or even uh, it's a little more high-end than you know your MIDI controllers and stuff like that it sits nicely in the middle uh, the price tag is I would say for somebody in my one person operation the price tag is much more affordable than some of those really high-end options so how does it work it's talking over uh, Ethernet connection and it's talking directly to your switcher or in my case I have it running through a router and it's talking to my ATEM switcher through there. So everything's sitting on the same network and it's pulling the uh, information from the ATEM so it knows what's on preview and what's on program. And um, it's allowing me to send these signals over the network, cut signals, uh, all that good stuff. So it basically works like a, like a broadcast panel would work. Um, you can see yourself using this in, let's say you have a, a venue where you have a fixed uh, setup or you're like me and you travel around, these things are very light and uh, a lot smaller than even some of the bigger options that Skyhide themselves make. Something like the um, XC series is the bigger version of this where it's modular as well. Um, I can see myself bringing just this one device to um, far away conferences that I have to travel to. But if I was doing something a little bit closer to home, I can bring the two. I can also add other uh, modules along. And uh, you can check out on the website all the other modules. Um, they've, they've got a whole lot available on there. Things like um, buttons and all different sorts of varieties, uh, layouts and stuff. So you can pretty much choose whatever one you want to be your master uh, device. And then you can add modules onto that if you, uh, if you so wish. So just taking a look at the website here, you can see the um, the XC series, which is a little bit bigger. There you can see Casper with a few XC series units on the um, on the desk, and uh, that would be more your your standard broadcast panel uh, enclosure. Um, but in my case, I have the MC series, which is this little slimmer one. You can stack a bunch of units together, and here you can see uh, a few of the modules that you can grab. In my case, like I said, I have the MC5 here the MC3, but you could jump in and grab uh, something a little bit different if you prefer um, the older style broadcast buttons. If you just want something that has all buttons on there, you can do that. Um, but in my case, I want to take a deeper look into what I have. So I have this master box, which is the MC3. It has little OLED displays on there, so you can see what um, what's happening. So in my case, it has camera one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Over here, it says cut and auto. And then it has these nice little uh, multicolor buttons that will allow me to switch between all these uh, these settings. There's great feedback on the buttons. They're very soft, very uh, pressable, and they give you a nice little uh, sound feedback as well. In addition to that, I have the MC5, like I said, which is a similar device. 
Um, it just has the little OLED displays on here and uh, eight buttons where I can uh, cycle between uh, different things on there. But we'll come to that a bit later whenever I get in the configuration setup. So how does this thing actually work? What can you do with it? Well, let's use some USB and let's connect it up to the computer. And then over on my computer, I can open the, uh, the Scarhoy app. So if I launch the Scarhoy app, we can open the online configuration and in there you can see actually what you can do with this thing. So, so you can see there that uh, the configuration page looks just like, um, just like the device itself. I can click on any of these buttons and I can see what each of them will allow me to do. Or I can open all the configurations and you can see all the buttons there and what they do. Let me just close that out again. And in this case, button over here, number five, that is my cut. So you can see there, BMD ATEM, Blackmagic Design ATEM, set up for cut on ME1. You can make all these changes. You can jump in here and if I want this to be auto instead, I can change that to auto simply by making that change, saving it and writing it to, uh, to the device. But for now, I'm gonna leave that as cut. Um, but you can see basically that every, all of these buttons are easily configurable. In the configuration that I have, I have it set up so that the um, these eight buttons are the eight inputs of my switcher. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and the program preview is set up that way. But instead I could jump in and I can make this my program row and make this my preview row for my first four inputs simply by making all the changes in the configuration here. So what I wanted to show you um, is just how to add an extra module, how to configure that to do a certain thing. So if I head over to the manage modules part, and I know that uh, my module is the MC5, I can go ahead and save that. And if I head back to my controller configuration, there you can see that it is not only the, the one MC3 over here, but it also has the MC5 added on there now. If I click on any of these buttons, they're obviously not set up to do anything yet because I've just added that. So um, in my case, what I might want to do is I might want to set up all of this top row to be the uh, program row and all of this bottom row to be the preview row. So I'm going to do that. Um, I've clicked on this first button here, which corresponds to uh, the button that I'm adding up to the top here. So um, this button right here will be that one. I clicked on that button and now I can go down here and I can add ATEM program source, ME1, and I want it to be program number one. And in that case, I just want it to be whenever I press the button. And then I'll just continue through the buttons. Number two, program, number two. And then I'll just skip through to when I've done this already. So I've done all the program row and they're all set up to be, um, to be all of those. And now I just want to do the preview row along the bottom as a sort of standard um, hardware switcher might be set up to do. So in this case, I'll just continue and do that. And now what you might have noticed is that you can also add on a shift button. So in this case, the top button up here is actually a shift button. So by pressing that, it, um, it accesses another level of controls. So if I want to also not only add the program and preview of my eight inputs, but maybe I want to also add the, um, the color bars or the color generators, um, also the media players, I can do that by a shift buttons as well. So not only do I want, let's say button number one to be the program source of uh, input one, but I also want to add another level and say, when I hit the shift button, I want the program source of color one, and then I'll go to the next button, add another level to that, shift, and I want the uh, program source there to be color number two. And um, then I'll just do a few preview ones just to show what it looks like. So in this button, I'll do a shift level, preview of color one, And then this one, I want shift, I want item preview of color 
too. And in your case, you would continue on there, but I think that's enough for my particular examples. So I can save that settings, um, and those will be saved and ready to write to the device. At the bottom of this uh, configuration page is all the ATEM settings for my particular device, and you'll have to do that too if you grab one of these. I head back over to the Skarhoi app, and I hit check for updates, and what will happen now is it will take um, all those changes I've made, it will bundle them all together, and it will write them to my um, unit. So then the next time I switch it on, it will remember all those things that I want, program preview, that I want all those shift buttons to do what they're supposed to do, and uh, we'll let that happen. It'll just take a few minutes, so we'll come on back in a minute. Okay, so we're back. The firmware has successfully loaded onto the device, and now you can see instead of before, where um, this was all dark, it's actually got buttons loaded up on it. So I can see a full eight input switcher here. I've got my program, and I have my preview, and I can just switch between all the inputs here, and uh, that's switching my ATEM in the background. You can't see that, but it is. Um, and it's taking that information of what's on program, what's on preview, and it's making it happen in the background, which is really nice. Um, like I said earlier, I've set up these shift buttons, so if I hold that down, some of the buttons will become inactive because I haven't set them up, but other ones, um, like this one is now color one, and this one is now color two, which is really nice. I um, also have color one and color two over here on the, uh, on the preview side as well, and then I can unhold that shift button, depress it, and uh, I'm back to my normal eight input switcher. Really nice. So you've seen me operate an ATEM, and uh, that's pretty standard, it works well. But you can also add what's called device cores. So Skyhi has a whole bunch of device cores, which is cool, that let you control a whole bunch of other things on your network. That can be PTZ cameras, it can be a whole host of other things. So in the configuration here, I can just go to add device, and you can see my device cores here. I have BND ATEM already installed, that's the one I've been doing with. So what I want to do is add another device, and in here you can see a whole, all the options pretty much that are available or in alpha, or plan for the future, or maybe a well matured like the Atomus Shogun, you have the uh, camera control from Blackmagic, multi viewers, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Other things planned like Casper CG is planned for the future, in beta, Epifan Pearl, pretty popular device right now. But what I want to add is a HyperDeck. So if I scroll up, um, I saw a sec, there it is. Uh, I can add the BMD HyperDeck. So that will um, bring in that device core, and I can save that. Head back over to my controller configurations. And now what I want to do is set up a button so that when I press it, it starts recording on the HyperDeck. And when I um, press it again, it stops recording on the HyperDeck. Just to give you an idea of uh, what you can do. And then you could set it up to do other things on there as well, if you wanted to. So I'm gonna overwrite this button here. And um, it had a few different states that I showed you a second ago, but let's just remove those. And then let's go in here and you can see the BMD ATEM stuff. We looked at that before, but at the bottom, you now have a bunch of other options added um, right here. So in my case, I want to set up the BMD HyperDeck and that's gonna record. And then it's going to be a toggle button, so turning off, turning on again. And then what I need to do, one more step, is go down to the bottom for the device settings, and I'll need to type in the IP address for my HyperDeck. So I find that, I hit save, and now that button will be set up for the HyperDeck instead. I'll need to just go back to the Skarhai app and check, uh, click on check for updates. And what that will do, once again, is uh, take the firmware, bundle up in a nice little package, and write it to um, the, uh, the master unit here, the MC3. So the firmware has been written once again. Um, you can see, well, maybe just about see, now that uh, this button actually says HyperDeck Record now instead of saying anything to do with cameras. So these buttons have not been affected. They all still work the way they should. Um, but this button is now my record button. You probably wouldn't do it this way. You might set this up as HyperDeck control all this top row maybe, record, stop, play, whatever. Um, but just for my case, I want just to show you what one button would do. So if I press this one button and you can see the HyperDeck in the background, then you can see that it starts recording there to the um, SD card. So now I know that as long as that red button's on, I am recording my show. And whenever the show's done, press that button again 
and the HyperDeck uh, will stop recording. So it's it just works. It's nice that some things just work, right? Um, you can jump into the configuration. You can set it up whatever way you want. Um, operate HyperDecks that are on your rack, maybe at the other side of the room that you don't want to get up and press record on. Then you can use the other panel here to cut between your cameras. So it's a very flexible and very powerful little uh, device. And what I really, really, really like about these Scarhide controllers, not only are they lower in price to the um, Blackmagic ones, but the configurability is, is a huge win for me that I can just use one little panel. I can add on more panels. I can set up these buttons to just be the four cameras that matter most to me. And then the other side, it can be set up to um, uh, you know, press record on my HyperDeck or in the future there's other things in there like pressing or doing things with, with Wirecast and other devices like like that on your computer, uh, software based things. Um, if I had PTZ cameras I could get a different module and control my PTZ cameras like that. And I can just sit at my desk with all the buttons I need and I don't have to get up and press record on cameras and all that stuff. Um, it just makes it simple, brings it all into these small, slim form factors. Um, check out Scarhaw's website for a whole lot more modules and a whole lot more other devices they have. Um, I think they might let me borrow a few extra things as well, so if there's anything in particular you want to see, then let me know in the comments and hopefully I can grab a review unit from their uh, site and um, you know, take a little poke around that as well. So I'll see you in the next video, goodbye.